My name is Juliana Keeping and I'm a reporter for The Oklahoman. I found this story because I was looking on GoFundMe for a different story idea and I stumbled upon a family who was fundraising for a funeral as well as what they described as what is yet to come in this investigation. So I thought to myself, what investigation? It seemed like an odd thing to throw in a GoFundMe funeral fundraiser so I gave them a call and that's how I found out about Sandra Stevens. Sandra Stevens was a 21-year-old woman. Uh, she lived at home with her mom and dad in Northwest Oklahoma City. She was working as a, as a waitress. She completed cosmetology school. And you know, she got into a little bit of trouble. I mean, just typical 21-year-old stuff, it sounded like. At the time she died, she was dating a man, and she just recently moved in with him after about a month of knowing him, which caused a lot of tension with her family who didn't agree with this move. I remember telling her at one point, because uh, she was talking about moving out, and I said, well, I think it's too soon. You don't know him well enough. They wanted her to focus on getting her license in cosmetology and cutting hair and kind of having a career. So she was in that in-between space, just trying to figure it all out, and that's when she met her boyfriend. One thing that people probably don't understand about police is that in addition to homicides, they also investigate suicides. A homicide investigator on average works with far more suicide cases than they work homicide cases. Uh, very, very few hom uh, suicide cases that I've ever investigated or I know of other people investigated that the, f the family was 100% sure that it was a suicide. Keep in mind, if, if in a typical year, if we have 70 homicides, typically we will also work 70 suicides. Now those are the ones where homicide detectives go out. And those are ones where there's either suspicious circumstances or a firearm was used. Uh, they will respond to those suicides and they will work them in a sense like a homicide just to make certain that there's no foul play. So, you know, they'll do everything, they'll collect, they'll collect evidence, they'll interview witnesses, they'll extensively photograph the body in the scene and police did do quite a lot of these things in the Sandra Stevens case. It's just a few small things, you know, per their own policies, they obviously missed. Oklahoma City 911, what is A few things that stood out about Sandra Stevens' case. One, her boyfriend called 911. He told the 911 operator that he had dated another young woman three years prior, Holly Schustrom, who had also killed herself in front of him with a gun. Okay, and where's the gun now? But what I found out was, while yes, the police chief, William City, said, Something like that would cause police to look more closely at an incident, but in this case, it did not. I would think that would be a really big red flag and I would really want to look into that person. And they may have looked at it and said, yeah, this is this guy, you know, he's up to something, but we, we don't have the evidence to prove that he, that he did it, you know. Upon review of, upon the initial review of both these cases, uh, we haven't found anything that would lead us to believe that, that they were murders. Um, but they're still being reviewed. A few things that police didn't know and never found out were also striking to me as a reporter that either the family found out over the two years that I looked into this and told me or I found out on my own just doing some basic digging around in public documents. Number one, um, the boyfriend had a violent history. Um, he'd been accused at least of beating an ex-wife in Texas. Another thing police didn't know is that in the weeks before Sandra Stevens wound up dead, he was repeatedly accusing her of cheating on him. Now, what I later found out was he was messaging with one of his ex-girlfriends who threatened to file a restraining order against him at the time he was dating Sandra Stevens and accusing her of cheating on him. You know, maybe that's nothing on its own, but this girlfriend would later file a restraining order and police never discovered that this had been done. The night Sandra Stevens died, she was leaving her boyfriend. She had gone home and told her family that she was breaking up with him. Could she move back home? They embraced her and said, of course, we'll always love you. 
and and my husband said well if he can't trust you there's no way you can keep this relationship okay you need to end it and this is your house this is your home you can come back home and we love you unconditionally when i spoke to police they had interviewed two of the three roommates that they told me about and they said that there was no evidence that he had ever physically harmed her but when i spoke to domestic violence experts they pointed out that domestic violence is more than physical harm. It's about control. Women have been telling us for decades violence wasn't the worst part of what they had experienced. And well, most abuse cases do involve some violence, in some cases very severe violence. The issues that are often much more salient to women are the restrictions on their liberty, the offenses to their dignity, to their, their isolation, the ways in which their freedoms of movement, their autonomy are constrained. To an outside observer, these things might seem small, but they actually add up to two really big questions. One, did police follow procedures as closely as they should have? Two, did Sandra Stevens really commit suicide?